episode one. If you come in, um, try to tailor your commentary by episode because I do want to look at the comment section per episode because I am going to be going by episode. Some episodes I'm going to spend more time on because they're either my favorite or they have a lot of character background and development um, attached to it. So let's go ahead with episode one entitled Stung and it takes place in Houston, Texas, April 2016. This show takes course um, over two years, a two year span. Okay. All right. So the show opens up with this question and this question we're going to hear throughout the entire show. Okay. Who's your favorite artist? All right. And then we get flashes of Nija, Nija, who is our superstar that our main character is obsessed with. And then we see Dre, our main character played by Dominique Fishback. She opens up a new credit card and she purchases two tickets to the evolution tour for Nausea. And the price of those tickets, $1,800. That's for two tickets, all right? So that's like 900 a pop, okay? And I feel like this is so funny because this, this show premiered right when Drake and 21 Savage announced their tour and their tickets for the nosebleeds, $350. I said, who he think he is, Beyonce, bitch? <laughs> pay drake i'm not paying 350 dollars for no nosebleeds like 500 is the max i would do for any concert but drake drake like i feel like i've already seen drake at his peak so i'm gonna miss that concert but i just felt like it, this show premiered right when you know something that was actually happening in society like with concert tickets and concert prices being out out the wazoo um so then we also get this buzzing sound right we're gonna hear this buzzing sound throughout the entire show and it to me my interpretation of the buzzing sound is when dre is about to snap okay so we hear this buzzing sound but it is interrupted by moans um by who we assume or who i assume primarily is her roommate and she's getting her back blown out now her roommate is chloe bailey aka um rissa in this show and I ain't gonna say black bone out. It wasn't, it wasn't even that, it wasn't even all that I thought it would be, how she explained it on social media. But she did state that they had that bouncy ball in between, and that was a very small bouncy ball. <laughs> like, 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 let's put it out there. I was like, okay, it, it, it's been a minute and a half, and we're going there. That's fine. We could do that. We could do that. Um, let's see, where we at? All right, so yeah, Dre walks by and sees her roommate um, having sexual intercourse with her boyfriend, Khalid, and she stares for a little bit too long. So much so, Khalid sees her staring and he starts showing out because you know how y'all, you know how boys do. They just gotta perform now, now that they know they have an audience, okay? Now, Dre is this awkward girl. She's really nice, inexperienced, as we come to find out. And she runs a stand account for Naja as well. Um, Rissa, Marissa, is her roommate and she's a makeup artist. She has a history of self harm. And her boyfriend, Khalid, is also very inappropriate to Dre. He's making comments about her body, how she's thick, and how, um, you know, she's a virgin. And he knows people that could help her out with that cherry pie. And just things like that. And then to me, because at first I was like, okay, they're roommates. And then some, she said something or how Dre was talking to her. It made me seem like they were sisters. So I was like, why would you be talking to my sister like that? But why are you talking to my roommate like that anyway? Like, I was about to say Chloe Bailey. But Rissa should have been checked that. Like, who you talking to? Who you talking about? Why you commenting on her body? Like, what's wrong with you? Why you, why you being inappropriate? Like, what's up with that? So Rissa gets this job because um, she's a makeup artist. She gets this job. Um, oh, what's it called? I'm doing makeup for a local, not a local celebrity, but a celebrity that's in town. So she asked Dre if she could take her shift while she goes and do her gig. So Dre is um, at their job now. They work at a kiosk in the mall. And this is when Khalid comes up and he asks Dre if he could help her pick out a birthday present for Rissa. And then that's when we get more of him making comments about her body and saying how he wants um, basically to be the one to 
uh, make her experience. And then he also goes into Naja talk. So he talks about how Naja is a regular girl. She's just like everybody else. And of course, we can't handle any Naja slander, even if it's not really slander. But you know, Dre puts Naja on a pedestal. Like she's not average, so don't say that she's average. How dare you, Khalid, okay? So when, um, what's her name? Dre comes back to the kiosk, it's been vandalized. So obviously she's in trouble by the manager, which means Rissa is in trouble by the manager because she, the manager didn't know that she wasn't going to be there because she was supposed to be there. This leads into an argument which will um, incite every event that comes afterwards, okay? Uh, that's why I really want to talk about episode one in depth like that because it's the most important episode, if we being real, because this is what sparks everything that uh, follows. Um, so where am I at in my notes, y'all? Let me see. Blah, blah, blah. All right, so this leads to Rissa and Dre getting into an argument. And while they're arguing, Dre tells Rissa, hey, I got us Naja tickets, surprise. And then that makes uh, Rissa go off like, why do you have Naja tickets? Why are you spending all this money on Naja tickets? You couldn't even pay your half of the rent, but you bought Naja tickets. So Dre told her this, hoping that it'll calm uh, Rissa down but it really didn't in all actuality it made her more mad so she was like I don't even want to go to the concert I'm going with Dre to Atlanta and then she was like and matter of fact when we come back from our trip I might just move in with him so of course Dre is kind of like really needy really clingy and this just like sends her into a frenzy and she decides to tell Rissa Khalid is, did I say Dre? My bad. She just has to tell Rissa, Khalid, he's no good. He's just like all the other boys that you mess with. And then you can see um, Rissa's face kind of like drain because, you know, we get a hint that, okay, she's done dealt with some F boys before. Haven't we all, sis? Haven't we all? And then uh, Dre tells her, you don't need to be with him. He made a pass at me. Rissa doesn't believe it. She storms out of the house. And Dre follows her and Rissa's like, can I just be alone? Can I just be by myself for one minute? Okay, she drives off. Now, because I saw the previews and I saw there's a funeral scene, I was like, oh, she's gonna get hit by a car. It's gonna be a car accident, she's gonna die. But that's not what happened. So let's get into what happened. So Dre is soaking in the bed, she's pouting, she's sad. And then of course, Naja releases a new visual. And this inspires Dre to get dressed up and go out and go to the club. At first I thought she was daydreaming, but she actually did get dressed up and go to the club. She meets this guy <laughs> who she goes back to his house or his apartment. And apparently they, they do the do because he naked with his little Peter Wacker in the, strawberry bowl i don't know <laughs> i don't know y'all is that image is burnt in my brain i hate that it's like that but um dre wakes up and she finds out that her phone had died so she goes to the bathroom she plugs up the phone and we see notification after notification after notification all of them being from rissa rissa is going off saying how you were right Kali was cheating on me he put me out i'm stranded pick up your phone i need you i need you then she's talking about how Naja dropped a new project. Oh, I love this song. No one would ever cheat on Naja. Naja wouldn't put up with that. And then Dre doesn't think anything of it. So she gets home. She checks the mail. She got the Naja ticket. She's about to go inside and surprise Rissa. And Rissa is laying lifeless on the bed. So like I already stated, we found out that Rissa had um, a history with self-harm because she has a scar on her wrist um, in the vertical way. So you know she did it right. And um, I'm just saying, and you know, she did it right. And so we can just infer that Rissa took her life. This leads Dre to clearly and obviously and understandably just go into a whole shell. Like her best friend, her roommate just ended it all and her phone was dead. She wasn't there to help her out when she needed to be there. Anybody would hold that guilt, right? So up until this point, I was like, are they roommates or are they sisters? But when the movers came and they started taking out all the furniture and all of Rissa's clothes, I was like, so they're not sisters. <laughs> 
And Dre has nothing because now you just on the floor with a palette of sheets and things like that, right? So where am I at, y'all? Let me see. Cause I'm just going off the top. I literally just rewatched the whole season just so it could be fresh on my mind. Right, so Dre is now watching old videos of her and Rissa sneaking out, I mean, for a time when they snuck out to go see Najee in concert. So she's just reminiscing on those. And then she follows that up by getting on social media where um, Marissa Jackson is trending because she supposedly, according to social media, um, ended her life after watching Naja's newest project. And everybody thinks that it's related and they calling her stupid and how she deserves to die and things like that. So understandably, this will make Dre upset, okay? So it's time, it's time to go to the funeral. She's there dressed inappropriately, might I add, but whatever, God said, come as you are. But the pastor comes up and tells her that she can't be here. The family has requested for her to leave. So then that just solidified to me that, oh, they're not really, uh, they're not related. They're just roommates or whatever. She doesn't want to leave. She says, this is my family too, but that's what the family requests. So she has to leave. When she walks outside the funeral home, she sees this big old beehive. Um, and it's just this buzzing sound. And here goes that buzzing sound again. We've heard it at the beginning of the episode. And then now we hear it after the funeral. And from my interpretation, that means that Dre is about to snap. So she then goes to Dre, not Dre's house, Lord. She goes to Khalid's house, Rissa's uh, ex-boyfriend. And um, she basically asks him, like, why weren't you at the funeral? We found out that he had a panic attack right before he was about to leave. And he just couldn't, you know, go and see her lifeless body. So he just decided not to go. Um, he cries. She kind of tries to comfort him by, like, tapping on his knee because she's so awkward, right? She has no social skills. And then he offers to make her some tea. You know, the tea is supposed to help with anxiety and things like that. So while he's in the kitchen, <laughs> and I love how this I love how this scene is shot. It's focused on him, but you see Dre like running from the background into the forefront, and she knocks him over the head with like a vase or something and just beats him to death. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> She went there. I feel like this murder particularly was justified. Like my best friend was with you. You were dog. You did her dirty and you led her into this downward spiral. I mean, I wasn't there either, but you caused this. So I could 100% understand why she felt like she needed to take Khalid out, if you ask me. So after she kills Khalid, she goes into like this panic attack. She starts hyperventilating. Um, from our knowledge, it's the first murder she's ever committed. And then she raids the refrigerator and she eats a pie. Now, I put that in my notes because if you watch the entire season, this is going to be a reoccurring thing. Every time Dre kills someone, she raids their pantry. She has to eat something. So, like, that's just what she does. That's her, her uh, MO. I ain't going to say her MO, but she'll murder you and then she'll eat your food. The nerve. The nerve of this girl. And then that is how episode one ends. I feel like we had a, a, a nice little uh, introduction to who our character is and what she is going to be capable of um, in the future. I do want to talk about episode two because episode two is my favorite episode. It was entitled Honey. It is the strip club episode. Okay. I feel like it was the funniest one. Um, the most lighthearted one. Well, duh, it was funny. And um, I don't know. It was just it was just not the best writing because I feel like episode six had the best writing. But um, I like episode two. So I do want to talk about it. Now, episode two takes place in Fayetteville, Tennessee, August 2017. And this is uh, a little bit more than a year after uh, Rissa's death. OK, now <clears throat> we see a man who's preparing to go into a strip club. The lore is what it is entitled. I'm trying to look at the chat. Okay. The lore is what it is entitled. Okay. And then we find out that this is where Dre has been working or has recently started working because she's the new girl there. And when I tell y'all she came out on the stage doing like this interpretive dance <laughs> to one of Naja's most profound singles, I was cracking up. It reminded me of a time when... 
I lived in Houston and I was kind of trying to <laughs> get into that world. Okay. I didn't audition. Like I didn't, I didn't do it that much yet, but I planned my audition in my head and it looked something like this. I'm not even going to hold you. Like, um, one of the dancers, uh, I can't remember her name, but she was like, well, you are not at one of them white clubs. And that's exactly where I was trying to go to the white club. I just thought that was funny. But her interpretive dance, I would have thrown some money at her, okay? And this guy that's at the stage is also throwing money at her. Now, she asked him, like, where's your homeboy at? And he was like, who, Tonk? Oh, I don't know. He probably on the road somewhere. And then she gets mad, grabs his food, and leaves the stage. So we know that she's looking for somebody, by the name of Tunk. I just thought he was a regular, um, like one of her regulars um, at that time. But if he was a regular, you would know his name, right? Right. So um, we find out that Dre really isn't making much money at the strip club because of the type of music that she chooses to dance to. Now, when she gets home from the club, she searches up a tweet about someone... I mean, from someone that was talking smack about Rissa, saying how she was dumb and she deserved to die because she killed herself to, uh, my bad, she ended her life because of Niger or whatever. And one, you're talking about Niger, that's a no-no. Two, you're talking about Rissa, that's a double no-no. So you know this person's going to go down. When we find out who that person is, when the camera pans back and we find out that it's Reggie Wilkins, a.k.a. Tonk, I was like... This girl has been plotting. She planned. Like, she found where this man lived. She found where he frequents to a strip club. And she went to work at that strip club just to meet him. Like, it's strategic. You know what I'm saying? Like, she had this planned out. She didn't just end up in Tennessee. She had a purpose for why she was in Tennessee. Um, so, we have a fellow co-worker. Co-worker by the name of Halsey, Okay. Um, she stops by Dre's hotel room and she has a very abusive boyfriend and she, um, also like gave, uh, Dre a compliment in the strip club when all the other girls were like talking smack about her. She was like, I personally, I liked your routine. Like, girl, you, you bad, you confident and everybody else just jealous. Okay. So she takes her out to eat. And then that's when we find out that Halsey, um, is half black. <laughs> And I'm mentioning that because she said, I had to leave my ex-boyfriend because he couldn't handle the fact that I was black. And I was like, <laughs> here we go. Another white girl that thinks she black. And then um, Dre was like, black? Who's black? Like, your dad's black? Half what? Half black? And I was like, no, but seriously, like, that don't make you black, sis. And then I looked at the end credits and I found out it was Paris Jackson. Michael Jackson's daughter. So I was like, oh, okay, you black. You can say that. You're fine. <laughs> She's cleared. She's cleared, you guys. Calm down. She's cleared. So at the diner, we hear Halsey. Um, well, she talks about how she thinks it's cool that uh, Dre is a uh-uh, uh-uh, car, uh-uh, car, uh-uh, car, uh-uh, car. She talks about how she thinks it's cool that Naja is a killer bee, mess with the hive. You get stung. And she mentions that she's a Halsey fan. That's why she named her stage name after this singer. So at first, I was like, okay, we got a potential friend here, though. Like, she thinks it's cool that you are part of this um, beehive. And she thinks that y'all have a lot of common because y'all live out of suitcases. Y'all don't really have a lot of friends and things like that. I'm thinking Halsey is going to be a nice friend for the ride, okay? So Halsey answers a text message voicemail, and she's, like, cussing her boyfriend out. And then she asks if Dre can take her, I mean, go with her to her house. Um, Dre walks in, sees the boyfriend is being abusive, cussing her out, throwing the food all on the floor, just being very disrespectful, right? So by the time Dre gets back to her hotel, Halsey is there in her bed eating food, and she wants to know if they can be roommates. And this immediately made me think about um, Rissa in comparison with Halsey. Now, Rissa wasn't in an abusive relationship, but Rissa's boyfriend was trash too, okay? So, not, not Naja, Lord Jesus. Dre sees some, like, Naja, that Naja's having twins on the internet. So, she gets this, like confidence like icons move throughout time and she just gets this confidence she decides that she's gonna go and murder Halsey's boyfriend abusive boyfriend emphasis on that and like I said I feel like she did that because it's kind of, I feel like she was kind of like making up in a way 
for what she didn't do or couldn't do for Rissa. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's why she killed Halsey's boyfriend. So after she kills Halsey's boyfriend, um, Halsey sees her do th does do this. And you would think that Halsey was going to scream or something, but she's right along with Dre, kicking the body, help, trying to help her bury the body. She's excited. She's like, we can go on the run. Like, oh my God, I feel so good. I feel like Halsey. I feel like I can do anything. And then we hear the buzzing sound. <laughs> And Dre just says, pop, like, nope, why are you talking too much? And who is Halsey? Like, that was so funny. She asked, hey, Siri, who's Halsey? As she eats a ham sandwich. So, like I stated, every time she kills somebody, she got to be, eat, she got to eat something shortly afterwards. Now, the next night or whenever she goes back to the club, um, Dre has this confidence, baby. She's exuding confidence, okay? And she does really, really well at her dance. Uh, she getting all the money, so much so where all her other co-workers are like, hey, you want to make some extra money tonight? Good, because we need a DD for this party we about to go to. So they take um, Dre along to this private party where they have like little rich white boys or whatever. In the car ride on, um, on the way there, um, Dre has like this nausea quote and everybody's just looking at her like, okay, she's obsessed, she's obsessed, it's giving weird. But they get to the party, and I want to talk about this scene because I just thought, like, bitch, you better. So, Dre is so awkward, but I really like how she can literally do the least and get the most. So, she's, like, eating chips and dip in the room, and this boy comes in, and he was like, I'm not one of those crazy people. I have a girlfriend, so I'm not going to cheat on her, but can I pleasure myself to you? And she was like, okay, how much? And he was like, about a hundred. She was like, mm, try a thousand. I was like, okay, a thousand. Okay. You better know your worth. And then, so he gives her a thousand dollars and she says, I'm still going to eat my chips. And she sits there eating chips <laughs> as he's pleasuring himself. And then, um, he's like, Ooh, bite that chip harder. And she's like, no. And then she just keeps eating. <laughs> And he comes and she makes a thousand dollars. Like, I've been doing life wrong. Like, I just want to say, I've been doing life wrong. Let me eat some chips for a thousand dollars. Like, what? Get out of here. So, I just really wanted to highlight that. I just like how they made Dre, like, even though she's socially awkward, she's like still that girl in a way. You know what I'm saying? So, after the party, um, the girls all leave and then the car catches a flat. When one of the dancers tries to go to the trunk for a spare, of course, Dre freaks out because somebody or some, yeah, somebody is in that trunk. And it caused her to like laugh hysterically. All the girls are staring at her like, this bitch crazy. And then we have a car that comes up down the street. The girls pose. They try to get the attention of the driver. And it's one of their regulars at the strip club. Tonk exactly the same person that dre has been looking for at the club so he to offers to take the girls back to his house so that he could change their attire and they can be on their way so of course dre obliges because she's been looking for him anyways so now that they get back to the house <clears throat> i kid you not dre could not control herself the moment she sits down she confronts him about who's your favorite artist and y'all know that's that question. And he says, somebody, child. And she was like, that person only has one Grammy. Naja has 26. How the hell you get 26 Grammys? Like, damn, okay. Naja must be that girl. And then everybody's just looking like, can you stop? Like, you're being weird. He got to bring it on on DVD. Like, <laughs> I love the dancers. They made this episode so funny to me. So the guy leaves to go get them girls something to drink and then he goes out to change the tire. Dre follows him outside. So they keep showing pictures around his house that, you know, he's a father, a family man or whatever. And it kind of like gets you to build sympathy for this character because we all know what's about to happen. So when she's outside talking to him, she asks him like, you know, questions. He's like, where are you from? She's like, I'm from Houston. He was like, okay, I know some people down in Houston. And she's like, well, ask me my name. Okay, what's your name? Dre. My sister's Marissa Jackson. He's like, 
Okay, I don't know of Marissa Jackson. So she confronts him about the tweets and things that he has said, basically. Well, no, no, no. I think he co she confronts him about the tweets about Nigel, but I don't think he co she confronted him about Marissa. But the fact that he didn't even remember, because it was uh, over a year ago at this point, it took a year to find him. He just, it's like out of his mind. And I'm not going to lie. This one was justified too, y'all. Because don't talk don't talk that stuff like that's my fam like that's kin you know what i'm saying like don't talk that stuff and then you don't even remember the shit you talking oh nah bro oh nah so all the dancers they get ready to go or whatever they get in dre's car and then dre has the buzzing sounds and you can tell she's trying to fight it she's thinking and then she decides i gotta go to the restroom she grabs her bag runs into the house and she tries to sneak attack the dude, but he's not even in the shower yet. So she hits him with the skillet and then he chokes her out, right? I'm thinking, I'm like, damn, how's she gonna get out of this? The dancers come in and rescue her. They're punching him, they're kicking him. One dancer comes out and just pop, pop. I'm like, like did y'all you have, did you have to shoot him now? Like, did y'all have to shoot him now? Dre is appalled. She's, oh, I think I'm gonna be sick. She runs out of the bathroom. While the girls are trying to figure out if they should leave the body or call the police, they hear Tyre's skirt off and Dre left them standing there, y'all. Dre left the dancers at the crime scene and was gone. I was like, damn, I did not see that coming. That's messed up. <laughs> and then we get a picture of her in the car eating and she is getting texts from Marissa. And I had to rewind it and zoom in because I'm like, ain't Marissa dead. Like, <laughs> so now we know that Dre has like some psychological issues. She's still talking to Marissa and we all know Marissa's dead. I know she was at first, like in episode one, she was texting herself from Marissa's phone. But now I feel like she's not even texting herself. I feel like she's just thinking all of this in her mind or whatever. So I don't really want to talk about episode three in depth like that. All we know is that she traveled to California to go get another fan that was talking smack online. But she runs into this guy who could get her backstage to Nyjah's husband's concert. There she meets Nyjah and she bites her in the face. I was like, okay. Okay, all right, that's fine. <laughs> Episode four is entitled Running Scared. She's back in Tennessee and it's April 2018. Titled Running Scared. And I'm gonna summarize it. I'm not gonna go into depth about it. But basically, Dre meets this clan of women who they are a part of the what's they call, y'all? What they call? Uh Decawin. It's a women's empowerment group through spirituality. And we find out it's a cult. Okay, um, they tell Dre that they can give her backstage passes to the not to the festival where Naja is performing. Okay, so while Dre is there, they have her doing spiritual hikes and spiritual spas and saunas and therapy sessions. So in these therapy sessions, she talks to Eva, who is played by Billie Eilish. And when I tell y'all, I don't know if Billie Eilish has ever played it in anything, like acted in anything prior. I'm not a fan. Like, I know who she is, but I don't like follow her like that. But when I tell y'all she acted her ass off, when I tell y'all she acted her ass off in this episode, I was like, I like this girl. I'm interested to see other projects that she would, that she would sign up for in the future. She really did a great job. So basically in that therapy session, she told, um... Eva everything she told her about Houston she even gave us like a little insight to her childhood which is why I really want to talk about this episode so in one of the conversations um we found out that Dre had been bullied people called her a dyke can I say it on the internet <laughs> they called her a derogatory word for gay um they called her, you know, ugly and just weird and other little things like that. So she had been bullied. She's not afraid of death. She thinks that it's natural because it happens to everyone. She's no longer religious because she said God is an echo. So she basically felt like she was talking to herself. So that's why she stopped praying. And then um, Eva asked Dre, when was the first time you heard Nyjah? And she said she was at her grandma's house and that she had spilled the milk. 
Now, Eva asked, now what color was the milk? And then Dre says it was red. Now, we all know milk ain't red. So, I don't know if that is something that happened in her childhood. Um, because in a later episode that we're going to talk about, we're going to get into that. Or if she has kind of like, like in her psyche, you know, the red is the blood because she has been doing a lot of murderous acts, okay? Like, to get the car that she's in now, she had to kill someone else, which she also tells Eva. Um, she says that she does bad things and she regrets missing the call from, um, Rissa, which obviously who would not, you know, who, who wouldn't have that guilt on their shoulders the day my phone goes dead and I'm missing all these messages where my friend or whoever is telling you that they need me and I don't pick up the phone and then now they're no longer here. So obviously that's some guilt that she's carrying on uh, with her. Now, the funny part about this episode is that these girls are in a cult. And it's so funny because in a way, Dre is in a cult too. But these girls are trying to use Nyja to get Dre in their cult. And if that makes sense, you know, like, you're like, well, would Nyja lay in the bed all day? Would Nyja do this? Would Nyja do that? But all the while they're trying to kind of like empower her though, empower Dre at the same time. Um, however, when Dre decides that she wants to leave because, uh, it's a festival day, y'all gonna make me late. The group realized they haven't made any progress. So they kind of threatened to like blackmail her. Like we know your secrets. You can't leave basically. So of course Dre is crazy and she's not going to take no for an answer. And she runs Eva over with the car. <laughs> she just straight runs her over with the car, period. Like get out the way. I'm going to be late. Dre gets to the concert and when she pulls up, the gates are closing because concert over, baby. Can I get you to turn your car around, please, ma'am? Thank you. We're done for the night. Concert's over. So she misses the concert still. All this um, finding yourself and trying to find a light, become a better person. She hadn't been eating that much at the resort. So you felt like she was making progress. It all just kind of went down the drain because... I hear music. Wait a minute. It's the Nausea concert. I got to go. And she kills a few people along the way, which is nothing for Dre at this point. Episode five is entitled Girl Bye. Now, this takes place back in Houston. It is August, not August, May 2018. This was a very short episode. This was the shortest episode. And rightfully so, because it was a filler. But to me, it was a very important filler that led us to episode six, which I do want to talk about. Um, but in episode five, entitled Girl Bye, we have It's Me, Ricky T, with his scene, okay? I love Ricky T. I've seen him and Dion, not Dion, Denzel from YouTube days. And just to see them, like, at the level they're at now, like, modeling and clothes, clothes designing and acting i just love to see i just love to see people flourish so i just applauded ricky in this scene he was funny um but the whole thing is dre is trying to get marissa's phone cut back on because marissa's father mr jackson had it turned off so we gotta get the phone to work because that's how she is in contact with marissa so she thinks okay so she goes to Marissa's old home the parents aren't there at first but when they come in um we got that shoddy because like why are you in my house she's trying to get them to turn the phone back on and then leon ooh, ooh, david ruffin himself is uh, marissa's father and i was just like the whole time i love me some leon i love me some leon okay period okay so we find out in this scene anyways that there was they had an older son who passed away um, and they had a failed business and then here comes Dre and he was like, you were just a check at the door. So I was thinking like, oh, she's adopted. They adopted her. That's what I was thinking, you know, foster child. Cause he said, she's a check at the door. And he was like, I should have never taken you in. I should have never taken the money or whatever. So I was like, okay, that's how they're sisters. That's how they know each other. That's why they're so close. That's probably why she a little messed up in the mind, okay? So that's why that episode was important. We found out 
that um, for sure we found out that Dre was adopted by the Jackson family. And then that's basically, that's basically what episode uh, five was about. So I'm trying not to leave it to episode six, but now we just go to episode six because that's really what matters, okay? Episode six in the title, Falling Through the Cracks. Now, I don't watch Atlanta, but online, a lot of people stated that this is the type of format that Atlanta has used, where it's the true crime documentary episode. And when I tell y'all this episode was the best well-written episode to me, um, as well as the most confusing episode to me, where I had to watch it twice, okay? I had to watch, I had to watch five, six, and seven twice to make it all make sense. So that's why I'm really excited to talk about it. So this is like the true crime episode. And Detective Green out of Memphis is following an unsolved murder in Nashville of Tiffany Long. And this reminds her of another case in Arkansas, which eventually leads her to Dre. Okay. Um, <clears throat> in this episode, if you didn't know they were talking about Beyonce <laughs> at first, now you know they're talking about Beyonce because we have like this little quick interview from this fan um, and he has on Ivy Park jumpsuits. He has a beehive, <laughs> two beehive pillows. I was like, okay, now y'all a little bit on the nose for real. Like y'all a little bit too on the nose. But in his interview, he was like, the beehive would never do, um, we would never murder somebody just for talking down. Like, yeah, we're gonna protect our artists, but we would never murder nobody. Murder is just too far. I mean, yeah, 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 murder is too far. Yeah, yeah, no murder though, no murder. And so I was like, oh, so y'all all might really be crazy. Like you might be able to do the same things that Dre is capable of doing. Um, when it comes down to your favorite artist, when it comes down to Nyjah, okay? Or they kept bleeping the name out in the episode because it's true crime, okay? So, the Detective Green, um, like I stated, all of her findings led her to the Jackson's house back in Houston. And uh, we find out that Mr. Jackson has also passed away in 2018. And I'm thinking, oh, she didn't double back and killed him. But she's um, the mom said that he passed away from prostate cancer. Um, this is when we find out that, excuse me, Marissa had asked them for rent money earlier that day or that week before she passed away. And we now know it's because, um, what's that girl name? Dre used her half of the rent money to buy Nyjah tickets. Um, we found out that, um, the relationship between Marissa and Dre because Dre is a foster child. Marissa took up for Dre. She, the, you know, really wanted to play big sister. And Dre was, um, she was a foster kid, but she was treated wrong by Mr. Jackson. They said that he made her sleep in the attic. Like, if you got, they have a big house. We all saw the house in episode six. No, in episode five. Why does my bedroom need to be in the attic? Like, why are you so intent on keeping me away from your daughter? Um, the mom insinuated that the dad thought that Dre was a lesbian and he didn't want that around Rissa. But the mom just thought that girls have a bond um, that's a sisterly bond that it doesn't mean that they have to be gay. But we find out that after this incident, um, well, first off, and Dre, yeah, uh, Dre came to stay with them um, when she was in the fifth grade. So she was around 11 years old. And there was an incident at a sleepover when they were like 13 or 14 years old where one of the girls that was invited to Rissa's birthday party, that's so Rissa, they had the that's so Raven, but it was so cute to me. But she was invited to the birthday party and they played a prank on Rissa where all the girls had piled on Rissa. And of course, because Dre is protective, she was like fighting the girls off and she ultimately ended up stabbing one of the girls. Um, Persons weren't charged, but they did have to pay for her medical bills. And then the girl stated that when she came back to eighth grade, that's how I figured they were like 14 years old, um, Dre had been not in school no more. So the Jackson family got rid of Dre, um, put her back into the system after that incident. Um, Miss Jackson, the mom, she felt really, really bad. She felt like she failed Dre and that, you know, she tried. And the Detective Green was just like, you know, you did all that you could do, mothers. All we can do is what we're able and what all we're capable of doing. So um, Detective Green catches up with Dre based off of her socials 
and we find out that she is currently in Atlanta going under the name of Tony. She shows um, this video where a fan has ran up on stage as I can assume probably a Nija concert and then it's followed by a mugshot of who Drea or Dre is at this moment going by Tony. So I'm thinking, cause this is why I had to watch this twice. I was like, that don't look nothing like, <laughs> that don't look nothing like the girl. That don't look nothing like her. So my, after my, you know, me thinking and wrecking my brain, this was the true crime episode. So this was the real episode. And what we've been watching is the dramatization of the real people, even though all of this shit is fake. But you know, that was the real episode of the dramatized series that we have been watching okay so um miss green wants to go and do some follow-up questions for dre slash tony just so she could get some answers and hopefully dre can implement herself in some of these cases um but now since her prints are in the system because she hasn't been arrested ever before i'm pretty sure it's going to be easy to find some evidence to attach her to all these crimes okay one thing I want to know, though, is how is Detective Green following her moves on socials if Dre doesn't have a phone? I don't know. Let's go ahead and get into episode seven. I'm making good time, y'all. I didn't want to be on here more than an hour because y'all know my sunlight about to go away. Um, let's go ahead and get into episode seven. This season only has seven episodes. I was a little bit down about that, but how they rounded it off, I feel like they, I feel like they did all right. They could have made it ten. They could have made it 10, but I'll get to that at the end. I'll get to that towards the end of the review. So episode seven is entitled Only God Makes Happy Endings. Okay. This is takes place in Atlanta, June 2018. So if we're doing chronologically, this episode will go before episode six. Okay. So I do like that they did like a little time jump. And that's why I really like episode six. It was just clever to me. Um, doing the true crime and then putting it out of order. I really like, I really like episode six. So episode seven, <clears throat> Dre is studded out. And I don't mean that in any offensive way, but she is full lesbian, okay? Uh, a, a whole stud out here in these streets, okay? And now we know that she goes by the name of Tony. Now she sees some girls walk out of a club and their Uber driver decides to leave because one of the girls is too intoxicated. So she offers the, um, the duo a ride back to their apartment. Now, when she gets there, um, she's talking to this girl named Rashida. And Rashida, at first, you know, she admits that, she, hey, I was kind of rude earlier. You can see her warming up to Dre or whatever. They smoke some pot or whatever. And then um, they talk about Nyjah because they put some music on. Nyjah comes on and Dre lights up. And then Rashida's like, oh, no, not this song. This song trash. And I was like, oh, God, you about to die. <laughs> girl, you about to die. You about to die, girl. But... Dre did not panic. She was like, nah, like, I'm a fan. Like, that's my favorite girl. And then um, uh, Rashida was just like, okay, okay, you're a fan. I get it. Um, she doesn't let Dre stay, but she does say, you know, can I get your number? Dre doesn't have a phone. That's so why I was like, how did Detective Green catch up with Dre if she ain't got a phone? But okay. So Rashida gives her a number on a piece of paper and sends her along her way. Now, the next day we see that Dre has been living out of her car um and when she goes into a corner store one day mesmerized by Naja on the tv when she comes back out she sees that the police um have tossed her vehicle they're taking all her stuff out it was a stolen vehicle anyway so i'm pretty sure they just caught up to it so this leads her to go back into the coffee shop where she runs back into rashida they chop it up they go back to her house and then long story short they start dating okay so much so where rashida even takes dre to go and meet her parents and we have a nice little scene with a you know, two-parent household. They're really accepting of their daughter, which Dre has never been accepted ever in her life. Um, two parents, loving household. They have money, things that Dre has never had in her entire life. And then what I did like, though, is that Rashida's parents also accepted Dre. Like, they didn't judge her, you know? So to me, that was like a good environment for her to be in. You know, you really was thinking like, oh, this is going to be a happy ending. That's what we were thinking. So one day, <laughs> so one day Rashida comes home 
um, from a long day of work. And we find out it's their anniversary, but she's stressed. You know, she's on the phone when she gets in. She's like, oh my God, I just needed some wine and a bubble bath, okay? So Dre is like, I got a present for you. Happy anniversary. And she surprises her with front row tickets to go see Nigel. Rashida goes off. She's like, uh, I'm not going. And of course, Dre's like, why? <laughs> Y'all, this part had me like, I was laughing and sad at the same time because I, we've been following Dre, so we know Dre's intentions. However, the girlfriend made some good points. One, I'm, why would you spend money? How much money? Last, the last time the tickets were three years ago, it was $1,800 for two. So she's like, why would you spend $2,400 on some front row seat tickets to go see an artist when you could have paid rent because i had to ask my parents for rent you could have paid rent you could have taken me to this new restaurant we could have went on a vacation with this money that you're spending for this artist like why would you do that she then she was like on top of that i don't even like niger you know i'm not a fan of her like why would you even do this it's not thoughtful this is a present for you it's not for me so she, she didn't even make the argument that I just came in. I told you I had a long day. I, I was tired. Like, why are you even in my face right now? <laughs> she didn't even make that argument. She made some legit arguments, though. The tickets were too expensive. And then I'm not even a fan. Like, you did not buy this for me. Don't surprise me with a gift that is really for you. So that's basically what the girlfriend was saying. Now, she was all in Dre's face, like, talking smack. She was like, you can't, you're selfish. You can't go through life with this bewildered look on your face. And then I looked at her face. <laughs> and I wanted to cry. Dominique Fishback and her mannerisms throughout this entire show was just on point. Like, when Rashida was yelling at Dre, she was just like. And I was like, stop yelling at her, though. <laughs> You don't have to be so mean. You don't have to be so mean about it. That's what I was thinking. So, of course, Rashida's going off. And this causes um, <clears throat> her to, Dre, to choke Rashida out. Goes up to her and just chokes her out. And while she's doing it, she's not making eye contact. Usually when we see Dre kill people, she has like this smile and she's hyperventilating and she's like rejuvenated. And when she had the therapy session with Billie Eilish's character, she said she enjoys killing people. But when it came to Rashida, she didn't have eye contact. She was crying. She was saying how I love you and I wanted to share Nyjah with you because I love you both. And then Rashida's dead. So you could tell that Dre really didn't want to do that. She coddles um, Rashida's body afterwards, and then she rolls her up to go burn the body. Um, <laughs> while she's burning the body, she starts the tickets. Rashida took the tickets from her and put them in her pocket when she said, I'm not going. So now Rashida's body's on fire. The tickets are on fire. So, of course, Dre panics. So she goes to the concert anyway. She goes up to the, the ticket people. She was like, they were like, tickets, please. I, don't, I don't lost my tickets. Okay, well, check your email. I don't have a phone. So she walks away. She's mad. She's trying to think, okay, what can I do? What can I do? She goes to the ticket stand. She pushes people out the way. I lost my tickets. Oh, sorry, we're sold out. I lost. I lost my tickets. Okay, what's your name? Why did she give that lady Rashida name? She used Rashida's money to buy the tickets for Nyjah, for herself. That's why the girl had to ask her parents for rent money. Damn, bitch. Like, you, <laughs> you can't even use your own money? You had to use mine? That was messed up. So you could tell that she was ashamed when she um, had to give the lady her name. So the lady was like, okay, now I just need your ID. Of course you don't have Rashida's ID. You're not Rashida. And even if you have Rashida's ID, you don't look nothing like Rashida. So that plan is over. So she's at her last resort. Scalpers. Scalpers like, hey, I got these tickets. They're really expensive though. It ain't no problem. Scalper takes her back to his car and they're about to do the exchange. 
excuse me, before Dre just shakes them real quick. You know what I'm saying? Because it's desperate time. It's desperate measures. The show about to start. We got to get these tickets, okay? So she shakes the man, gets the tickets. Now we in the concert. We in the concert, baby. She gets in. She's pushing people out the way. Makes her way to the front. Mesmerized by Nigel. So much so where she jumps the railing, gets on the stage, and tries to go for Nigel. Of course, security pulls her in one direction. They pull Nigel in another direction. And Nigel says, stop. Let her go. Here's the microphone. Sing for the people. When Nigel's face appears from the darkness and comes to the forefront, I was like, that's not Nigel. That's Chloe Bailey. <laughs> that's Rissa's face. So I'm like, okay. And it, it took me back to the talent show episode where she was singing and everybody was making fun of her for it. So, and of course, Rissa used to take up for her. So I feel like that's why she envisioned Marissa's face on Naja's body because those are the two people that she loves, the two people that she looks up to, the two people that understood her. And she gets the mic and she turns to the audience, I love you all. Everybody cheers. At the end of the show, Naja takes her backstage. They walk to the car. And she just cries as Naja embraces her. And the episode goes off. Now, realistically what happened, <laughs> realistically what happened because of episode six, we know that Dre got on stage, but I don't think Naja took her back to the, the, the car to go cry and have a heart to heart. I feel like that's when Dre went to jail. Okay, so not, all that was in her mind, the getting the mic, the singing, envisioning Marissa's face on Nyjah, obviously. All that was in her mind, and she really went to jail for bomb rushing the stage like that, which ultimately is going to probably lead to her being behind bars for a multitude of murders. Um, <clears throat> that is the end of my series review. Um, I already said that I don't think that Dre was really um, embraced by Naja. Oh, if they do a put, if they do a season two, if they do a season two for this show, I feel like Detective Green. Who ah, let me see who played Detective Green because she did so well to me. She was talking like this the whole time, and she would put that in there. Then you never know. Like I love, I don't know. It's something about her. I was just like, I love this lady. Let me look up the cast real quick, cause I wanna, I wanna, I wanna know her name. Oh, now they don't have the whole cast on here. Hold on, y'all. Let me see. Heather Sims. Heather Sims. Um, I feel like if they do a season two, it should surround Heather Sims, um, because she wants to go to Atlanta to interview Dre. I do want it to be like an origin story, you know, in the interview room. We can still get Dominique Fish back to do her, you know, playing her childhood on up. Like, what happened? You know what I'm saying? Like, what led her to being the way that she is prior to her first murder, if that was her first murder? Um, because something had to happen to why she's in foster care system in the first place. You know what I'm saying? Um, and in the episode six, like the foster care worker was like, I'm not going to give you her side story so y'all could, you know, blame this girl for whatever y'all trying to blame her for. I was like, that don't make sense, bitch. Give them the side story so we can know why she's doing this. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't want to just think she's crazy. Let's know what led up to this. So I feel like season two could, should definitely be an origin story following Detective Green. Um, and then, of course, we get, um, you know, Dre's background story. I do think that I don't know how that could go past season two because I do think that she should be imprisoned by season at the end of season two, unless um, we get another crazed fan picking up, you know, where she left off and that could be a season three. I don't know, but I definitely see at least two seasons out of this. Um, my overall thoughts of the series, I enjoyed it. Like I stated, I watched it. I binged it first off um, the first day it came out. I rewatched it before I got on live. Um, I do feel like it could have been 10 episodes and they could have done another episode of the background story and then episode 10, she's in jail type thing. But if we do a season two, that's fine. Maybe she has a long, a long build up to how she is, how she is today. Out of 10 stars, I would give this show 
I honestly would give it a nine. I love fresh concepts. I'm so sick and tired of remakes and reboots and I'm tired of that. So I love how the concept is fresh and original. Shout out to uh, Donald Glover, Childish Gambino for this concept. Like, I just love it in general. The writing um, by, oh my God, I had her name. I had her name. I said it at the beginning of the video. But the writing was well. The concept was well. All the acting was good. Paris Jackson, Michael Jackson's daughter, she did well. Billie Eilish did superb. And then Dominique Fishback, who's the breakout star to me, her mannerisms, just being so awkward and still being like, yeah, she crazy, but you still have a little, a little bit of, what's wrong with the baby? You know what I'm saying? Like in you. So like, I just really enjoyed the show. I hope they do do a season two. I'm not opposed to that. Well, thank y'all so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. I really hope y'all enjoyed this review. If you're watching it on the review, um, make sure y'all drop a comment down below. Thumbs up this video um, because it just really helps your girl out with the algorithm so I can do more content like this. I really feel like my, I really feel like I'm underrated if you ask me. Okay, I really feel like, I really feel like that. But <laughs> that's what, uh, liking the video and leaving comments, that's what it does. It helps push this channel to the forefront, okay? Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Drop down below, who's your favorite artist? I wanna know. <laughs> I'll see y'all next time. It's a date.